And now, live from Level 5 Productions on the island of Milleronia, it's The Larry Miller Show! Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America, and everyone who's always wanted to be a guest star on NCIS. Hi, folks, and welcome back to The Larry Miller Show. I'm Larry Miller, but in a way, aren't we all? And boy, oh boy, was it a beautiful day today. Oh, for everything, but to be in show business, it was a great day. Colonel Jeff and I... Really had long, busy days, and we couldn't. Well, we couldn't be happier to get here. And he was in a ton of traffic, and uh, but to get here to the studio, we're on the mainland, and here at Stately Miller Manor. And boy, oh boy, we saw each other. We smiled because we we love doing our show, and we're very happy when we are. And so no matter how busy we are, you know what? I'm glad we're here, and I'm glad you're there. Well, as you know, the music always makes me happy. That's the Pete Shelley Orchestra and the Lorna Doom Dancers, featuring boy tenor Brad Simpson asking the musical question, With all of the advanced features cars have today, why can I still not get one with a smoke screen, oil slick, rear bulletproof screen, and left and right wing machine guns? Good question, Brad. That's a heck of a question. And uh, I'll be honest, I think the reason you can't get one is that if all that stuff was available, can you imagine how many 19-year-old guys would get it and destroy the world? I mean, millions, tens of millions, hundreds hundreds of millions. Everybody would get one. And uh, here's the good news, though. Colonel Jeff and I both want just one of them made and for you to have it. That's the reward for a question like that. Boy, oh, boy. It would be fun to live in that. A lot of those old James Bond cars in the Sean Connery days and with a couple of the other fellows afterwards, too, that they really had uh, Q, that was, right? Q made some great cars with all sorts of that stuff on it. See the red button? Don't push the red button. And, uh, oh, they had great stuff. And, yeah, you're right, they had oil slicks and things. And didn't they have one also that spread uh, sprayed out uh, tire tacks or nails that just punctured every, the tires of the guy behind them? Chasing them, the four guys in the in the black four door car, who were firing guns, and uh, yeah, and those and those steel jacks, razor sharp, that would just go all over the road. And boy, that was it for those four guys, wasn't it? And uh, sad, the saddest thing was they were always near the edge of a cliff. So even if so, they can't just pull over. And say, wow, he really messed us up. No, once those tires get blown, well, good night, nurse. That's it. That's it for the bad guys. And uh, that's another great thing. I always love that about James Bond movies also. You're not, you didn't get that excited about it. So, so well, well they, but they're dead now. Well, so what? Good. That's okay with me. You know, that uh, when, they, <laughs> when Sean Connery was on the island of, well, Dr. No... I think that was the first one, wasn't it? And it's a terrific movie. And they were all, all the, all the bad guys on his bad guy army on the island were dressed. Well, they were always the same. They had the one piece silver suit with some kind of big V on it. Oh, not because it stood for anything, but it was just kind of a fabric. Terrific stuff. And they didn't know. Dr. No didn't know that. That was it for him. He thought that he could just get James Bond and uh, Ursula Andress, who, you know, just strolls out of the ocean there. And I don't think you can beat that. I just want to also send her another tip of the hat of, uh, holy mackerel, she's a terrific actress, Ursula Andress. And, you know, walking out of that water in the uh, in the bikini, come on, come on. 
How are you going to beat that? Well, you're not. But uh, anyway, good question, Brad. And by the way, it's worth mentioning now as uh, as an obituary that uh, Pete Shelley and Lorna Doom, who I mentioned, were in two separate punk bands and both just passed away. And if you know who they were, you also know that Colonel Jeff was the one who asked if we could mention them appropriately. And of course we could, and of course I did. And, uh, well, fellas, Pete and Lorna, you have a big fan here in Colonel Jeff, and I, I bet you have a lot more listening right now. And by PayPal. That's right, PayPal. Still one of the greatest companies in the world. I'm, I'm glad they're a, a sponsor. And, uh, folks, if, if, if you work with PayPal, you feel like maybe you're saving the world. And who knows? Maybe you are. Uh, it's a great group. And to get there, by the way, you can go what, a bunch of different ways on your own laptop, on your iPhone, uh, well, dozens of different ways. But don't do that. Go to our website and we'll take you there. Our website, of course, is LarryMillerPodcast.com. Who's on the mountain? Tom Mix. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's tr- we've got to get him more strings. He's a, he's a good guitar player on that acoustic guitar, but wow, that thing! I hope he didn't hurt himself. I hope he didn't knock his eye out. Well, at any rate, though, uh, PayPal's a great group, and it's important to us. You know what? If you feel like you're a fa- well, number one, you're a fan of the show here, and why wouldn't you be? And you want to help us out? And uh, send some money over. And why wouldn't you? Well, you know what? Do that. Go to PayPal. We have a banner on our website. Click it. We'll get you to PayPal. Then go take a nap. Remember them. PayPal. And they'll remember you. And that brings me to my favorite part of the show. The joke of the week. (laughs) I love these because, well, as... You know, maybe as you know, I'm a I'm a in addition to being an actor, which I love, and a writer, which I love. I'm a comic. I'm a stand-up comic, and I love well, not only uh, doing my act and and spreading humor all over, but there's nothing like telling a joke and keeping it alive. And uh, I like this one a lot, and so does Colonel Jeff. Uh, I hope you do too. There's a Jewish woman who has two sons. And as they grow up, one becomes a doctor and the other becomes a politician. And the politician, uh, well, winds up running for state senator and wins. He, he's now a state senator there. And, uh, he tells his mom, you know, when the inauguration is then, and she's not that interested. She doesn't want to go. Oh, okay. And, uh, he's a state senator. And then, he gets even better known, and he runs for the United States Senate and wins that. And now he's a United States senator, and he tells her also when, well, the, the inauguration is, and she's, oh, I'm not, no thanks, she's, she doesn't go again. Okay, and uh, he becomes so well-known and so successful, he runs for president and wins. And now he says, well, Mom, you know, you... You you ought to come to this one. It's in Washington and uh, at the inauguration. She says, all right, all right. And she does, he gets her a seat there in the crowd. And as he's uh, taking the oath of office up there, she uh, turns to her side and there's uh, just a fellow sitting there in a suit and tie. And and she uh, taps him on the shoulder and, and she says, you see that man up there taking the oath of office? His brother's a doctor. <laughs> we got a kick out of that and I hope you did too and that joke by the way was sent in by a listener a fan of the show Jamie Gerwin so you know what good for you Jamie you keep that joke alive and folks you do the same thing send us things and tell that one and that brings me to my second favorite part of the show 
the Poetry Corner. string quartet and it just dawned on me i actually like the guy who coughs in the middle there and we never we don't know who he is but he gets a, a tip of the hat from me good i hope you're feeling better now but i like that we have your cough on our poetry corner theme and uh, this is a very good one folks it's called april rain by robert loveman and uh, he was American, lived from 1864 to 1923, born in Cleveland, attended the University of Alabama, where he wrote this poem, which became very famous. This was a very popular poem. He became a famous Southern poet, and he wrote one called Georgia, which became the official state song of Georgia that he wrote the words and music to, and then it was eventually replaced by Georgia on my mind, which I'm sure all of you know, and then Georgia, Georgia. And uh, at any rate, so this is quite a fella, Robert Loveman, and here's his poem, April Rain. It is not raining rain for me, it's raining daffodils. In every dimpled drop I see, Wild flowers on the hills. The clouds of gray engulf the day and overwhelm the town. It is not raining rain to me. It's raining roses down. It is not raining rain to me, but fields of clover bloom, where any buccaneering bee can find a bed and room. A health unto the happy, a fig for him who frets, it is not raining rain to me, it's raining violets. Isn't that nice? Good for you, Robert Loveland. That's a beautiful poem, and very sweet and well, and very poetic. Yeah, it's not raining rain. It's a good way to feel, too, folks. It's not raining rain for any of us. It's raining, well, violets. And that brings me to my third favorite part of the show. MMM, the magic movie moment. Oh, this is this is a, always a fun category to do, the magic movie moment. And I know you feel the same way about movies I do and that you think of things that you that are magical to you too. This is a great movie. And there's also a reason I'm talking about it. The movie is The Pink Panther from 1963, directed by Blake Edwards, starring, whew, what a cast, David Niven, Peter Sellers, Robert Wagner, Cappuccine, Claudia Cardinale, there's so many others. It's a great cast, and this movie, folks, is hysterical. It tells a great story, really moves well. And I also, and let me just tell you about the magic movie moment. The uh, the mass escape from the masquerade ball at uh, the Duke's mansion, which is a big climax scene, and it takes place in Rome. And <laughs> it's just great. Blake Edwards, golly, what a genius director he always was and had a great comic sense. And... This movie has so much in it, and this scene, though, the, the mass escape, it's, well, as I said, a masquerade ball. So everybody there, they're, well, they're looking for the phantom, and to who was stealing the, well, the Pink Panther, that uh, that diamond, a huge diamond. And, uh, well, the, the, the phantom turns out, you know, to be Sir David, Sir Charles Lytton, who was uh, David Niven's character, and uh, and uh, Cappuccine, who helps him out, she's married to Inspector Clouseau, by the way. She's married to Peter Sellers, and it's just very comical. She's always, he's very amorous. He's always very romantic, and she's always 
Well, I'd rather have a headache, and I'd rather just take a bath and maybe a pill. And he's all right, my, all right, my darling. And he never, he's just oblivious to what's going on. And she's been having, oh, well, a long standing love and affair with Sir Charles Lytton, and, uh, who is the Phantom, and she helps the Phantom. And, folks, all the guests at this party are looking for the Phantom because it's about midnight or one in the morning. And they didn't get a chance to demask themselves, as happens at a masquerade ball. Oh, they go running after the uh, the Phantom, and they all get into jeeps and convertibles and cars. But of course, they're dressed in elaborate costumes. One is, you know, wearing armor from a knight in the Middle Ages. Another one is a w- woman who would, you know, who owns a vineyard. They do anything as ex- extravagant as it could be. They're dressed as, and it becomes such a funny scene through the cobblestone streets of Rome at midnight. There's no one there, no one around, and these cars are all going this way, that way, and they stop and they look at each other and they're going up and down the hill and across the town and every different way. There's you know seven, eight cars going at the same time, and it's just so well done. You're really laughing, and remember, they're all in costume. And there's a cut. Blake Edwards is so good at finding humor like this. There's a cut. It's all quiet now. There's a, oh, these folks are chasing after each other. But he cuts to, it's completely dark. It's quiet. There's a French wino. And he's there in Rome. And he's sitting on a bench outside a cafe. There's no one else there. There's nothing going. There's not another person in the street. And he's had enough. He looks at the bottle and he puts it down next to him on the bench, and he's going home. He gets up, he stands up, and he starts to walk across the street there, across the cobblestones. And he's not stumbling too bad, but he's an older fella, and he's drunk. And he gets to the middle of the cobblestone street, and at that second, now all the cars come from the masquerade ball, and one goes this way, one goes that way, and then right around him he just stops and looks at them going back and forth. And now they're having conversations. Remember, they're still looking for the phantom. And they stop with the wino right in between them in two convertible jeeps. And then they're talking to each other. Now, I thought he went that way. No, he went near the beach. He went up the hill or something. And they're doing this, and the wino just watches and looks back and forth. And then every car, and it's just perfectly ridiculous and funny. And finally, they all, oh, they all disappear. And then they have a, a giant accident, but before that happens, they all disappear, and the wino just thinks for a second and turns around and walks back to the bench he was sitting on and picks up the bottle of wine again. It's just such a great Blake Edwards joke. Then there's a giant crash, ah, and they all hit each other. And now the guy, if he wants, he can, now he can walk home again. But it's a terrific magic movie moment from a great movie. This movie is so well done. And uh, please see it if you haven't. You'll howl laughing. You'll be touched by the romance. And it really tells a good story, too. And the reason it was in my head was Robert Wagner is wonderful in it. And I'm working with him this week on NCIS. And we just, well, you have lunch together. It's wonderful. I'm telling you, folks, this is the sweetest, coolest guy in the world. And, you know, sometimes people in show business were annoying. Oh, I don't like him. This guy is beloved. And I'm telling you, he's got that Cary Grant gene in him. He's in his 80s, his late 80s, Robert Wagner. And he looks fabulous. And he's not having operations. I mean, he's got white hair and a a full head of hair. And he's just, his skin is terrific. And he's, you know, slender. He wears a jogging suit into the the, the lunchroom there. And... uh, He's so cool. At the script reading just a couple of days ago, they call it the table read, and people fall from the network, all the producers, all the executives came down just to watch him because he's so much fun. Folks, he he threw in at one point the word baby 
in that cool way that that he does. He just says, let me tell you something, baby. I can't even do it, but and I wouldn't try. He did it, and everyone howled with pleasure, not just because it was fun, but they howled seeing R.J. Wagner do that, and he says, he says, baby, the word baby, like no one on earth has ever said it. And he came by, you know, it's so funny because we were at table, sitting at tables of port, and you can't help looking. I looked at him and just smiled and, and waved, and he did that. I was telling the colonel, and he did that where you, you know, you hold your finger up and kind of like you're firing a gun, but in such a cool way. He did that to me with a smile, and I thought, I mean, I almost passed out. It was so cool. So, you know what? I'm telling you, folks, that's that show and that cast is so good. Mark Harmon, of course, is the star, and I'm telling you, he's so gracious and cheerful and polite which doesn't happen in show business all the time. And he's a pleasure to be around, a great leader, by the way, a great team leader. And what a cast to lead. David McCallum, who's, well, you know, for as Ilya Kuryakin from The Man from Uncle, which I just told the colonel, I think that's 1964. McCallum looks fabulous. And like someone else who was, Never had an operation. His hair is blonde, and and I mean real blonde. It's not dyed blonde, and it's still blonde. And he looks just great, and I've worked with him on an episode there a couple of years ago. And for what it's worth, I parked in his spot today because he wasn't in at work, and they put me in there and said, uh, yes, Mr. McCallum isn't coming in today. Why don't you park there? I said, you've got a deal. And uh, those things are cool to me. It may not sound like much to you, but I thought just seeing his name on that spot and pulling in, I thought, holy mackerel, that's pretty good. Oh, you've seen him in so many movies like The Great Escape. Oh, so many things. And he's great in this show, too. Brian Dietzen, and I'm working with him almost. uh, He's playing uh, the medical examiner who's just under David McCallum there at NCIS. And he's wonderful. We're in so many scenes together. He's a great actor. Wilmer Valderrama, whose parking spot I was in the day before. Same thing. He wasn't here. They said, well, why don't you park in Mr. Valderrama's spot? And he was so nice to meet. He had the nicest things to say. And, well, this is really something that Maria Bello uh, is one of the stars of the show now. Now, uh... Boy, I hope you know her. What a great actress she is in so many good movies. And she's really a great talent. And, by the way, is gorgeous. She's really, really something. And she's a pleasure to sit around you in the cast chairs and chatting with her. Just Again, that to me is, what a day. And I parked in her spot the day before because she wasn't there. Which, again, just makes me happy. And, yes, Robert Wagner. Robert R.J. Wagner. And he plays Anthony Donozo Sr. Michael Weatherly played his son, and he's not on the show anymore. He went to do his own show. And I'm telling you, the, the writers and the producers of this show are so cool. Scott Williams, by the way, wrote this script, and he's one of the producers too. And he's on the set every day, every minute of every day. And uh, it's so cool to have him there because he's, he's so much fun to hang out with. Diana Valentine is directing, and she's great. And uh, there's one of the writers, Steve, came by, and it's so funny because he's been there. You know that this show, by the way, has been on 16 years. That's actually astonishing because most of you, I'm sure, would say, well, that's, so that's a good show that uh, – what are they on? Three years now? Three seasons? 16. And they're number one. It, it's, this is quite a thing they've put together here. And I'm telling you, these producers all have a nice smile. And they smile back at you and say, hi, good to see you, Larry. Nice to have you back. 
And you just don't see that a lot in show business. And, uh, oh boy, I've been, uh, today was the third day of filming and I come back and, well, Colonel Jeff and I both really tired. I told him, Robert Wagner walks better than me now. I mean, you know, that's how tired I am. And tomorrow we're on location. Uh, down in Marina del Rey at the docks there to be on a yacht that, uh, well, that my son was kidnapped and, and his prisoner on, but we're going to rescue him and capture the bad guy. And I'll be there too. And this, sure, you get up early. Well, that's showbiz. And uh, so to be there at, whew, let's say, 7.30 in the morning, and that means, well, it's probably an hour, depending on traffic, an hour, maybe an hour and a half to get down there, leave yourself some extra time. And I, I wouldn't change a thing. Even if you could say to me, well, you could be there at 11 instead, if you wanted. Well, actually, I'd do that, come to think of it. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone would say yes to, to that. Well, just thank you, yes. But you know what? I just can't wait. I'm so glad... Colonel Jeff and I had a good day's work, and we came here, sure, a little tired, you know, dragging our feet. And as I mentioned, he was in just an insane traffic jam. But you know what? We did it. And, uh, oh, we're so happy we did it, too. And uh, he got a glass of water I gave him with ice in it. And that, sometimes the simplest things in life are the best things. And I know that, and you know it. And I'll tell you more about when this episode is on, and you'll know that too. Because we know the same things, you and I. Homer is Homer, and Pluto is a planet. So remember, folks, as always, if you walked out of bed today and had a job to go to and a home to come back to, and someone there who cares about you, folks, the game's over and you've won. And that's sure true. Right, baby? We'll see you here next time. Motorists, look for bicyclists. They have a legal right to the road. Oh, and our lives are in your hands. So include us in your field of vision. Bicyclists? Your right to the road also involves responsibility. Operate your bike like any other vehicle, safely and legally. Share the road. Visit the Guggenheim Museum at 1071 Fifth Avenue. Our weather, fair overnight, low 65 to 70 degrees, hazy and humid on Monday, high 85 to 90. I'm Bill Wolf. Have a good day. This concludes our program schedule for the day. Portions of the preceding day were pre-recorded. We will return to the air tomorrow with more of your favorite programs. And now, our national anthem.